Welcome to example number five. So now we're studying vertical circular motion, which is found in section 5.7 of your textbook, page 151. So we're looking at a ball that is whirling around in a vertical circle on a string, and suddenly when it gets down to the bottom of this path right over here, then there is a little razor blade put in here, a little knife, and then the ball gets cut. And the ball is going to fly off and turn into a projectile motion problem. So really interesting application of two things, circular motion with projectile motion, very similar to a typical AP exam problem. So uh, we're given a couple of pieces of information. We're told the mass of the ball is 100 grams, so that's 0.1 kilograms. We're given the length of the string, so that is really the radius of the circle. That is 60 centimeters, so we'll just put this as 0.6 meters. And we're going, we're given also this height, we'll just call that H, I guess, uh, for now. H is going to be 200 centimeters, which is 2 meters. And at the, the tension of the string, when the ball is at the very bottom of the circle, that tension is given as 5 newtons. So we want to know how far will this ball land on the ground. So this is x. Okay, so quite a complex problem. And uh, you have to think about this, well, maybe in a backwards idea here. You're, you're looking to find out this horizontal distance that it travels. Before you can find that horizontal distance, you'll need to know the vertical height so that you can find out the time that it's in the air. But furthermore, you'll need to know how fast that ball is leaving when it's cut by the string at horizontal speed Vx. Okay, so what we'll do first is we're going to study the circular motion of this object and look at it when the ball is at this very lowest point right here and when it's getting cut by the knife and try to find the velocity that the ball is leaving at that particular point. So let's draw a free body diagram. So here is the center of my circle, here is the string, and then the ball here, and the ball is following this art path here in a circle. And we're trying to find out the velocity of that ball, Vx, as it leaves tangentially at that point when the string is cut. So we, what we want to do is draw a free body diagram for the ball at that particular point. So what are the forces that are acting on the ball? Well, we know the ball has weight, so there's a force of gravity going down. And we also know that the ball is, must be accelerating towards the center of the circle due to the tension. So there is a acceleration towards the center of the circle and at that point the lowest point would be upwards, directly upwards at that particular point. And so now what we'll do is we're going to apply Newton's laws along the y-axis. So we'll choose a y-axis that is positive upwards here. So we're going to sum the force along the y-axis and realize that it's not zero because it is turning. The velocity is changing and so we do indeed have an acceleration towards the center of the circle which is straight up. So that net inward force of mv squared over r is deduced from two forces. The tension upwards is pulling up and then there's the weight going down, so at minus fg. Now we're given the tension of 5 newtons, we're given the mass of the ball, we also know that fg is really mg. And we're looking for the velocity of the ball. So we're looking for v at that particular point, vx technically. Okay, so rearrange the equation and solve for v. So V would be equal to R times the tension minus mg and then divided by the mass and the square root of that whole thing. So go ahead and plug in your values and see what you get. You have 0.6 for the radius, the tension is 5, the weight is 0.1 times 9.8 and then the mass is 0.1 and we're taking the square root of that whole thing. And that gets you a velocity of 4.91 meters per second. So that's the velocity at the bottom, which is also the horizontal speed. Now, we also have to realize since it's being cut at the lowest point, it is flying tangentially off here, and the vertical velocity initially is 0 meters per second. So now that velocity, by the way, is now the initial horizontal speed. So now the problem becomes a projectile motion problem. We're going to need to find the time in the air using y equals y0 
plus v0 yt minus 1 half gt squared, and then use that to find the horizontal distance afterwards. So let's assume uh, that uh, we the final position is 0, and the initial, we'll call that y0, is this height. Now this is, uh, we have a 60 centimeter radius, so this distance here is 0.6. And then from the top all the way down is 2 meters. So we need to find that y0. And so the y0, this is obviously not drawn to scale, is 2 meters minus 0.6 meters, which gives you 1.4 meters. So it, the ball at that particular point in time is 1.4 meters above the ground. It has no initial vertical velocity. Then we have minus 1 half times 9.8 meters per second squared times t squared. So let's go ahead and solve for t, and we'll get a time of 0.5345 seconds, roughly. And we're now going to plug that into our equation for position now along the x-axis. So we have x equals x0 plus v0 xt. You can put in 1 half axt squared, but you know that's going to disappear, so will the initial position will be 0. So we have x equals that horizontal speed that we got from the circular part, which is 4.91 meters per second, and then multiply by the time that's in the air, 0.5345 seconds, and then we can find out what x is. And that gets you an answer of 2.625, or 63 meters. And there's a nice complex problem. Uh, if I gave this to you on a test or quiz, I'd probably walk you through it and ask you for the velocity at the bottom, and then ask you maybe for the time in the air, and then ask for the horizontal position. But it is good to know how to solve a problem and think backwards as you solve through this. So as we produce, go through this course further, we're going to see more and more of these problems where we have mixture of topics. Okay, and that's it for this example.